What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Bullshot Darts. So the USA portion of the CDC Tour wrapped up this last weekend in Philadelphia. So we have all the final standings and we got three new main event winners. So I'm really excited to talk about this. And this video is strictly going to be about the tournament and the winners. If you're interested on how my darts were, go check out my last few videos because I did personal recaps of all of my matches. So make sure you guys go check that out. But first, it is Bullshot's mission to grow the sport of darts. So if you are new, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop this video a thumbs up, and also go check out bullshotdarts.com. I will be releasing my first shirt up on there soon, and I think the Bullshot logo is the coolest logo in darts, so it makes it the perfect way to show your love and passion for the sport that we all love. So make sure you guys go check that out. So let's get into this. Uh, I want to start, uh, you know, on behalf of Bullshot Darts and all dart players in North America and around the world pretty much, but thank you so much to the CDC for everything you guys do without the CDC and everyone involved, all the staff. You know, we don't have these big tournaments to play and look forward to, so this stuff cannot happen without you guys, so big shout out. Thank you so much to the CDC, and also thank you to the Columbia Social Club for hosting the CDC again. I believe this is the sixth, fifth, sixth, or seventh year in a row that they've hosted the CDC, and this year was hands down the best year there so far. Uh, the setup was absolutely perfect. We didn't have as much people as normal, but the setup was absolutely amazing. And the venue just absolutely killed it this year. So thank you so much to the Columbia Social Club as well. All right, so let's get into this tournament, guys. We have three new main event winners, two of them being qualifiers. You know, so that's why I'm saying that this weekend was dominated by the underdogs. You know, when you got names like Danny Baggish, Danny Lauby, Chuck Puglio, Leonard Gates, you know, I could keep naming these top guys. When you hear all those names in the same room, you kind of expect to hear those names when you're talking about the winners. But this year, well, this weekend, not so much. So it's really cool. So first of all, before I get into each individual winner, let's just give a big shout out and congratulations to all the winners of the weekend. So we had Kevin Luke. Adam Savada, Seth Stefano with the main event wins, and Joey Lanau with the Evolution Tour victory. So let's start with Friday. The tournament starts, and we have uh, the qualifiers before, and then the main event starts. So straight out of the qualifiers, uh, the one of the qualifiers, Adam Savada, comes out in his first match. He throws a 96 average in a 5-0 win. So Right off the gates, we got this qualifier coming in, and his first match, he throws a 96 with the 5-0 win. So that kind of put everyone on notice as it is. He went on to play Adam, I'm sorry, not Adam, he's Adam, <laughs> uh, Brandon Kessler, Joey Lanault, Robbie Phillips, Gary French, and then in the finals, he ended up being st beating Stephen Phillips, who is Robbie Phillips' brother, and Stephen was also a qualifier. So Friday night... We have two qualifiers in the final. So what a crazy way to get the weekend started. And of course, Adam Savada wins. We have a qualifier winning Friday night, the tournament. And I don't know anything about Adam Savada. I cannot wait for him to go out and throw more so we can see more of what all he's about. Because in the semifinals, he also threw a 101. So going into the finals match, he's coming off a 101 performance. So Absolutely incredible. I think I heard he's from Arizona. He did qualify for the Continental Cup, which is all the way in New York. So I really hope he shows up to that because I want to see him throw more darts. So big congratulations to Adam. I'm really excited to see what happens because he obviously has a lot of talent. And if he decides to continue traveling and doing all this stuff, he's going to be a force in the dart world. So awesome way to start the weekend. Two qualifiers in the finals and Adam getting the win. Let's go on to the second day, which is uh, technically event number five, and we got the young gun, Seth Stefano, taking the win. And not only did he win this day, but he dominated this day. He had four averages in the 90s, two averages in the upper 70s, which for Seth is n really not good darts for him, but it's still like solid and he was still able to get the win and that's what's most important. So clearly he wasn't throwing his best starts in those matches, but he was still able to pull through and get those wins, which at a young age is huge for him. So let's take a look at what he did here. Uh, Seth, another qualifier, you know, he was ranked pretty high because he did good in Tampa, but 
he was still a qualifier. So actually, let's rewind to earlier. So he started super early in the morning because he had to play the qualifiers in the morning. Then he played the Evolution Tour. Then he played the main event. So this kid was playing darts the whole day. So it really paid off for him to get the win. So his first match was when he threw a 79. So one of his uh, lower performances, but he was still able to get out the win against Gary French. This is where he absolutely hit the gas pedal because these numbers are crazy. So his next match, he goes up against Patrick Gibson, gets the 5-0 win, and the dude throws a 95. Wow. Then he goes on to play Danny Lauby, and he throws a 92. And Danny threw a 92 too, and he was able to get the 5-4 win over Lauby. So, wow. <laughs> he goes on to play Alex Spellman. Spellman uh, was throwing really well going into this match uh, and still did throw pretty solid. He actually got four more... He th Spellman averaged an 82, Stefano averaged a 78. So technically Spellman did throw better darts, but Seth was still able to squeeze out that win. So, you know, that's huge. And I think I remember watching this match. They went to that sudden death leg. I don't remember exactly what it was, but Seth was under 100 and Spellman, I think, was still like in the 200s. I'm not too sure how it worked out, but I just remember Seth absolutely went off in that final leg. It was really cool to watch. And that momentum brought him into a semifinals match, semifinals match against Chuck Puglio, where he threw a 91. So now he's back up into the 90s again in the semifinals against Chuck Puglio. So he beat Lauby and Puglio, our two World Cup represent, representatives in the same event, and also Alex Spellman. And then in the finals here, he plays Jules Van Dongen, and he throws a 91 and wins 6-4. Six, six so... Absolutely incredible day by Seth. Of the three winners, I would say that Seth had the best performance for the whole tournament, the whole day. Uh, and he's only like 18 or 19 years old. So it was absolutely incredible to watch. And I mentioned that he played in the Evolution Tour earlier. He got bumped in the first round. So I really think that lit a fire because, I mean, just look at these numbers that he was throwing. His average for the day had to have been in the upper 80s. So to be able to do that through what? We got six matches here. You know, it was really good. The level of talent that was in the room on Philadelphia this last weekend was incredibly high. Uh, it was probably the most talent I've ever been around in a darting hall. So absolutely incredible performance by Seth here. And Seth, like I said, is just a really young kid. So I'm really excited to see what the future has in store for him because he already is a top player here in North America. And he's only going to get better. He, him, and I'm, well... And Joey Lina, who I'm going to talk about in a second here, you know, they're around the same age. They're both top shots and they're going to be able to feed off each other and grow together throughout all these years. So give it, I don't know, maybe five to 10 years. And like I said, these guys are already, you know, top players in North America. But in five or 10 years, I think these two are just going to be on another level. And they're still, they're not even going to be 30 years old. So I can't wait. So I did mention Joey. So let's talk about his big win. He won the Evolution Tour on Saturday. So technically Saturday was dominated by teenagers because the Evolution Tour, uh, Joey won. And then the main event, Seth won. And Joey is an absolutely incredible shot. Uh, so a big congrats for getting that Evolution Tour win. And yeah, Joey's an incredible player. Everything I just said about Seth, like I could say the same thing about Joey. These two kids are just absolutely phenomenal shots. And I'm so excited to see what the future has in store for these guys. All right, let's go into Sunday, the final day of the weekend. And we got Kevin Luke coming out on top. And I don't know much about Kevin Luke. You know, I've definitely heard the name, have seen some of his stuff, but I don't know much about him. I believe I heard that he was one of the top youth players when he was younger, but he wasn't really doing any CDC stuff. So he won his tour card earlier this year for the Q school. And he was down in Tampa, didn't throw as good as he wanted to, but now here we are on weekend number two, and he's getting a big victory. So throughout the day, he uh, his first match, he won 5-0 against James Tranfaglia. Tranfaglia? James? Uh, he threw a 75, and then he played Peter Stewart, uh, who is another Evolution player. He was in the Evolution uh, finals on Saturday with Seth and Joey. And Kevin came out on top five to one against him. And then he goes on to play Bruce Robbins, who is an incredible shot. And he threw an 86. So he went from a 75 to a 77. 
he really turned up when he had to against Bruce Robbins, throwing that 86, and he got the 5-2 win. So going into his quarterfinals match, he's won 15 legs and has only dropped three. So really off to a hot start here. And he goes on to play Danny Baggish. And he threw uh, 87 against him, which was his second best performance. It was his best performance up to that point. And what a time to do it against Danny Baggish. Like, that's the time when you have to throw your good darts. And, you know, sometimes that's where a dart player might crumble because, you know, they're playing Danny Baggish, possibly the best dart player we have here in North America. He has his PDC Tour card. So Kevin was able to turn up big in that match and get the win 6-4. And his next match, this is where stuff got crazy because he went on to play Jeremiah Millar in the semis. He ended up throwing a 78, uh, which is one of his lower performances. And Millar actually averaged an 80. So he threw better darts, but Kevin Luke was still able to get out the victory. And I'm pretty sure at one point, Millar was up 4-0 to zero in a race to six. So Kevin Luke was down 4-0 against Millar, who is a top-notch player that we have here. And he was able to, you know, turn it around. He was able to just, you know, all right, I'm down 4-0. I need to turn this around. Now is the time. I have to win six of the next, what, eight legs? And he ended up winning six of the next, what, seven legs. He went on a six six to one run. So he got the win six to five against Millar, giving him all the momentum in the world going into his finals match against Jules. And once again, Kevin Luke turned up huge when he had to against Baggish. Now he's playing Jules in the finals. Now he turns it up again and throws his highest average of the day with the 93. So he got that victory six to three over Jules. His match winning out was a 130. So going into that, you know, you kind of think, oh, he's going to at least have a shot at the bullseye. But he ended up going trip 20, trip 20, getting that win on that double five. I love 130 out. I love any kind of out where you always have that possibility of the bullseye finish. But if you do it, your triple, you still get a, an out somewhere on the outer ring. So big congrats to Kevin. And I'm super happy that he won this because, like I was saying, like I've, I always heard about that up like his youth performances and all that stuff and now that he's in the CDC he struggled in Tampa but in Philly he was able to put together this performance and get a main event win so big props to Kevin Luke that was awesome and while I'm talking about performances of the weekend you know we can't not mention Jules Van Dongen who did make the finals uh Saturday and Sunday and he got a top eight finish on Friday so I mean, Jules is an absolutely incredible shot. Going into this weekend, I thought for sure he was going to win at least one of these events, um, but he didn't. And it's not because his darts were bad. I mean, just he ran into some absolute monsters in these finals. And still being able to make the finals two times in a weekend is absolutely incredible. So he also had a very good weekend. Uh, so big, well, I mean, congrats to Jules for being able to do, you know, what he did making the finals two times. That was really cool. All right, so that's all the winners for the weekend. This video's getting long, man. I talk way too much. Uh, I just get too excited when I talk about darts, especially when we have a weekend like this where we got three underdogs winning. You know, we got all brand new people winning these main events. So it just really shows the depth of the room that we had. So let's get into some final things here. We got the Continental Cup coming up in November and the Canadian side still has one more weekend. So we don't know who's going to be representing Canada, but we do know he will be representing USA, assuming none of these guys drop out. So... Right here, we got Danny Lauby in the one spot. And since he's in the one spot, that also means he gets to go to the World Championship, which I'm going to get to in a second because I'm super excited for that too. On the two spot, we got Leonard Gates, Gary Mawson, Chuck Puglio, Seth Stefano, uh, Kevin Luke, Jules Van Dongen, and Adam Savada. So those are our top eight players there. Assuming none of them drop out. But if they do, the first person that has a shot at, you know, taking a replacement would be Jeremiah Millar, and then Alex Spellman, Nick Lindbergh, and then Darren Young. And if all eight people drop out, I get lucky because I'm the 16th spot. So <laughs> if all eight of these guys end up not going, I could get my shot at the Continental Cup. <laughs> uh, so I'm really excited with these guys. So let's just start from the top. Danny Lauby, you know, of course. Who, who didn't expect Danny Lobby to be there? Uh, we got Leonard Gates, Gary Moss, and Julio Stefano, all these guys. But the people I'm really, really looking forward to watching is Seth Stefano. Because he's so young, this, I assume, will be his biggest tournament that he's ever played in. So I've seen him throw unbelievable darts at these other tournaments. And now 
he's going to be in like the biggest tournament of his life. So I'm really curious to see is if if he's able to if he is going to be able to keep his composure and continue throwing these lights out darts or will the pressure get to him a little bit? I don't know. So I'm really curious to see how he throws. He definitely has the talent to win it. I mean, all these guys do. It's just a matter of being in the right mindset and pushing through this these pressure situations. So really looking forward to Seth in there. Uh, Adam Savada, I'm really looking forward to. Like I said earlier, he is a really good darts player and I have, don't know anything about him. So I want to see more of his darts and what better way than the Continental Cup. So hopefully he makes it out there because uh, I, I just want to see him throw more. Uh, we got Jules Van Dongen, super excited to see him throw. Uh, you know, he's like the fastest rising star here we have in North America. He's winning like everything that he goes to. And he was able to make it to the Continental Cup and he didn't even win a main event. So he was only at one weekend and he made it to continent qualify for the Continental Cup and he didn't even win an event. So pretty crazy that he was able to do that there. Um, so Jules, as an early prediction, I'm going to predict that he wins it, but... I don't want to speak too soon because we still got to see if anyone drops out, the different seating. We got to see what Canada players make it. And I'm really excited for that because I want to see these matchups. I want to make my predictions. And then, I, man, I, I just cannot wait for the Continental Cup this year. I'm so excited. Uh, so, yeah, who else do we got on there? I mean, just all the other guys are pretty much top-notch guys. Uh, you know, same with Kevin Luke. Now that he has a CDC win under his belt, I'm really curious to see how he performs at the Continental Cup. So, Danny Lauby got the world championship. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about here. And I'm so excited for him because he is, you know, one of our top, most well-known, well-known North American players that we have here. You know, when you think about North American players representing North America on the worldwide scale, you know, obviously we got Danny Baggish and Jeff, Jeff Smith with their PDC tour cards. Matt Campbell now has his tour cards, so he's one of the faces, but Danny Lauby does not have his tour card, but he's still one of the biggest faces that we have here for North America. And he needs this experience on the big stage. I say it all the time. I'm going to keep saying it because it's just true. And North American players struggle on the big stage because we don't get that kind of experience here. So the more experience he gets on those big stages, the better he's going to perform, the more comfortable he's going to be, and the more it's going to show the world that North America is a force of darts. You know, we just need to get that experience. And he looked really comfortable at the World Cup and he did throw really good darts. Uh, it was just a couple things here or there that he missed. And I honestly think it was due to the fact of his uh, lack of experience on the big stages. And he has been on the big stage a few times, but when you're playing Simon Whitlock, no North American player will ever get the kind of experience that he's had over his career. Any player overseas. So... Getting that experience is only going to make him a better player, and I'm just so excited for him to get that, and yeah, congratulations to Danny Lobby. All right, guys, we're at 18 minutes. This is much longer than I thought it was going to be. I want to give one more big congratulations to all the winners, Adam Savada, Seth Stefano, Kevin Luke, and Joey Lionel with his Evolution Tour victory. Once again, a big thank you to the CDC and all the staff in the CDC and the Social Columbia Club. I cannot wait for the Continental Cup, and I also cannot wait for next year's CDC Tour because I am ready to throw, and I want to make that Continental Cup so bad next year. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're new, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Drop this video a thumbs up. The more bullshot darts you watch, the more 180s you'll get. So make sure you go check out all my other playlists down below. I'll see you all in the next one, and shoot well.